Don't forget to check out the Region Locked book, the link is in the description down below. When you think of the giants in the gaming industry, you think of Mario, Sonic or Pac-Man. Perhaps your mind even goes to Mega Man. However, one thing setting the Blue Bomber apart from the plumber, hedgehog and pack person is board games. Mario Party, Sonic Shuffle and Pac-Man Fever all took these iconic video game giants, pulled them out of their comfortable gameplay settings and put them onto a virtual piece of cardboard. Well, it turns out in Japan that certainly did happen with Rockman, aka Mega Man, but the West was never given the chance to roll the dice with roll. Today, we'll be looking at Wily and Light's rock board, That's Paradise. Wily and Light's rock board That's Paradise was released on the Famicom in 1993, exclusively to Japanese audiences. The game can easily be summarized as a board game in a similar vein to Monopoly, requiring the player to spin a roulette, advance around the board, buying properties, and charging others rent for landing on their owned tiles. The game can be played solo or up to four player competitively. The player is able to choose their character from the Mega Man series, each with their own goal. Dr. Light, the yellow player, wishes to expand his facilities as a means of achieving world peace. Dr. Wily, the black player, wants to build evil laboratories to achieve world dominance. Roll, the pink player, wants to build hospitals to help all of the sick and injured people in the world. Dr. Cossack, the blue player, wants to build new labs to simply continue his experiments. And lastly, Kalinka, the red player, wants to build castles in order to become a real princess. Mega Man, who is not playable, instead takes the role of the Games Master, similar to Toad in Mario Party. Reggae, Dr. Wily's robot companion, also makes his first retail appearance in Rockboard, later appearing in Mega Man 7 and 10. There are two sets of rules. Bankrupt, if the player loses all of their money and has no property left, they are out of the game, as well as Battle Royale, the only difference being that when the player becomes bankrupt, they will continue to participate. There are a total of four different boards that can be played within the game. Green Continent, Cold Island, Continent of Sand, and Megalopolis. All players begin a game on the Ecan space. After each lap of the board, passing the Ecan space rewards the player with Zenny, the game's currency, and landing on it will provide them with a random award such as a multiple of their typical Zenny reward. Each player moves around the board in turns. When the player's turn begins, they will spin a roulette and move according to their spin. Depending on where the player lands, a variety of outcomes can occur. When landing on a land square, the player will have a chance to buy the lot. If the lot has already been purchased, they can buy a building on that land, even if they do not own it. This will divide the rent between both players who own a stake in the property. If the player building on the lot can afford to buy out the landowner, they are offered to do so at a premium cost. Owning both the land and building and adjacent tiles increases the rent exponentially. If the player lands on their own lab, they are also able to upgrade, similar to Monopoly and hotels. If the player lands on a tile with an existing property, the effect can differ depending on who owns the property they land on. Each character has a special building effect that has a slim chance of triggering. Dr. Light requires they draw a card. Dr. Wily must be paid 300 zenny by the player. Rolls tiles cause the player to skip their next turn. Dr. Cossack has them spin the roulette again, and Kalinka will transform the player for a single turn. Transformation tiles will turn the player into one of three different robot masters. They will remain this way until they next reach or pass the space again. These transformations mean that the player will be unable to perform any typical actions, such as interacting with any squares on the board, buying property, or playing cards. Instead, they will be able to do a special action specific to the robot master they become. Guts Man will downgrade an opponent's building when landing on it. Shadow Man will take cards from other players, and Dust Man will take Zenny. Question Mark tiles have the player draw a card, which can cause any number of effects. The game has a total of 32 cards, 7 positive eddy cards, 6 negative reggae cards, 4 rush cards that deal with movement, 13 boss cards with a wide variety of effects, as well as 1 Mega Man and 1 Proto Man card, which protect the player against other cards. Rush tiles will cause Rush to appear and use Rush Coil, launching the player to another Rush tile on the board. Tunnel tiles will randomly supply either a positive or negative effect. Lottery tiles will allow the player to purchase a lottery ticket. When landing on the tile again with the purchased ticket, a draw on the lottery takes place. 
Depending on whether the player spins the roulette to match the resulting numbers, rewards are distributed. If they do not match, the player is still given more money than they initially invested. Construction tiles, which feature a met with a pickaxe, will cause the player to lose a turn. Entertainment tiles trigger a racing minigame, in which all players except the tiles owner will be able to bet in one of three different types of races between mets, in a similar fashion to a horse race. Any lost bets are repaid to the owner of the tile. Each repetition of this minigame will increase the betting fee. If the player runs out of zenny and cannot afford any costs, they are forced to either sell a land or a building. This starts an auction, allowing the other players to bid for their assets. A game ends when the board's objective is met, which requires a specified number of properties developed and a certain amount of zenny to have been accumulated by the player. At the time of the game's release, Mega Man was at the height of the series' popularity, having already released several popular NES platformer titles. Series artist Keiji Inafune, synonymous with Mega Man, was barely involved in the game's creation, merely designing the game's box art and Wily's companion robot, Reggae. The team had wanted to include as many robot masters from previous games in the series as they could, though they decided to leave some room to create a character that fans would associate with the new title. Rockboard was released exclusively on the Famicom, but a Game Boy version was being worked on at some point around the same time, being created by the Japanese company Jewel, who who had the game listed under their developed titles on their official website. Adding to this, composer Hitoshi Sakimoto, who has since worked on such titles as Final Fantasy Tactics, also had the Game Boy title listed under his discography on his official website. Quick Man was also planned to appear as another Robot Master transformation for the player to take on, but was cut from the game's final release. What he would have done remains unknown. Sprite data for Drill Man also exists within the game's data, though he doesn't appear anywhere in the game. Based on where his graphics are stored, he was likely planned to appear as a boss card attack. A set of gold bars can be found alongside his sprites, suggesting that he would have been used to dig for Zenny. The game actually has an ending, though it is hard to achieve. The player must complete the game using Battle Royale rules on the Megalopolis map, and by the end of the game, must have attained 75% total control of the board. This results in a short credit sequence being shown, featuring Mega Man himself in his only full appearance in the entire game. The game's boards were likely created to represent real-world locations, such as the green continent looking like South America, the continent of sand looking like Africa, Megalopolis being the United States, and the Cold Island most likely being Antarctica. Rockport didn't get a fair chance in the gaming world. Rumours have spread since the game's Japanese release, muddying the waters to the true reason it was never sent westward. Many people believe that Nintendo prevented the game's international release, believing that the game promoted gambling to young children. A theory that might hold some ground, though it does become doubtful when considering the variety of other gambling titles and board games with console releases at that time, such as Monopoly. Evidence of the game's attempted localization comes from a magazine snippet. Lost Levels community member Ray VGM found a tiny piece about the title in an article of an old Latin American official Nintendo magazine, Club Nintendo. The article previewed a number of Capcom titles that were shown during the 1993 Consumer Electronics Show. One of the features titles was Mega Board, including a screenshot of the game featuring English text. Not only this, but shortly after, the game appeared on a Teco HQ sales flyer, though listed as Mega Man Board Game. This first attempt was clearly never followed through, for one reason or another, but it wouldn't stop Capcom's team from taking another stab at getting the game past the international border. In an interview with US Gamer, Capcom's Ray Jimenez and Digital Eclipse's Frank Cifaldi spoke on the release of Mega Man Legacy Collection in 2015. The media outlet exchanged with the two on the game's inclusion. It also makes sense from a tech perspective to just go with the NES games because they're on the same hardware being reproduced. I know it's not emulation technically, but it's working to the same spec. Did you ever consider throwing in Rockboard as some sort of bonus, given that it's the odd one out on the same technology or platform? The answer isn't no. We definitely had thought about it, but there wasn't really a way for that to fit in for us, especially since it was in Japanese, right? So... We even looked at translating it, if I could speak to that for a second. As close to the technological images, you could theoretically do it, but you're starting to go away from everything we're trying to do, which is to keep everything authentic. We couldn't release an all-Japanese board game here in the US, so... Is that just a case where you personally wouldn't feel good about it, or the platform rights holders would be no-go? 
There is a requirement that all essential game information has to be localized to the support language, and the game, like a board game, has a lot of essential text in it. You can't play that if you don't understand Japanese. So, even just throwing it in as a curio was off the table because of the logistics from on high? We're aware of all the curios, right? Nothing is really impossible if you really want to do it, and you have enough time and resources to do it, but it would just lose the focus of what we're doing. Ultimately, the game was never published officially for an international audience, though a fan translation was created by fans of the Mega Man series at website Mega Man PC. Dr. Cossack, Servbot 20, Guillermo, and Elaine. This translation makes the game fully English, though with some names altered and bizarre dialogue as a result of direct translations. Did you also know that Capcom made a strategy RPG with Namco for the PlayStation 2, crossing over many of the company's most popular characters? If you'd like to see more about Namco across Capcom, take a look at one of our earliest videos here. As I mentioned before, we're making a book based on this show, so if you'd like to read more about regional exclusive games, see how you can help us fund the book over on our Unbound page in the description down below. Thanks to She Says from the fantastic Boundary Break series, I would highly recommend checking that out, as well as the Nostalgia Nerd, check him out for all your retro gaming needs. They supplied the voices of that bit in the quote, as well as Matt, the big dog. Thanks to him too. Thanks also to the patrons, they've been going by on the screen, and don't forget to like and subscribe to PewDiePie. <laughs> but do it! <laughs>